941 Thursday, July 28th. This is going to be a video deposition as to why Ford Motor Company owes me millions of dollars. I began sending them ideas from when I was in, being held illegally in prison back in the late 80s. Different, I get ideas and I go ahead and I send it to all the car companies, really. But so you know, I just just before I got paroled in '91. That was the first time they paroled me. I get called into the office by the the resident unit manager. He's, you know, uh, Mr. Herbert, are you writing somebody at the Ford Motor Company? And I said, yeah, why? Because they had an answer. You know, it was Etzel Ford II. I said, and I had, I, I, Told them I had the Mercury Cyclone. Let's resurrect the Mercury Cyclone with a natural gas engine. Okay. You know, 120 high thing. We're talking 14 to 1 compression and all the whole shot, baby. And I'm got I'm a pretty well thought out proposal, right? And they don't answer. So I figure, hey, he's busy. So I go ahead and I write a note, some more expanding on it and stuff. I'm totally honest about not being legally held in prison. And that's what they do. It's one of his staff called the Michigan Department of Corrections to complain about an inmate writing it. Because the last letter I sent, I got, I was, I was getting pissed. You know, why the hell are you doing that? You know, you can't, nothing, you know, type thing. And so they complained to the Department of Corrections. Instead of writing me and telling me, hey, we're not interested, you know, stop bugging us, they complained to the Michigan Department of Corrections. Okay? Now, I started to go off. Because that's, that's why I did 32 years in prison, because I go off on them. You know? I'm telling you, because you know, why, if they didn't have a problem, why didn't they write me and tell me? You know? So he said, don't worry, it's not going to affect your parole. They just want you to stop writing. Well, they could have wrote me and told me that. You see? But instead, they complained to the Michigan Department of Correction. So I paroled in 91, August of 91. One of the first things I did was I started my business. You see my business card? Same thing. In 1991, I had printed printers in Dearborn. Okay. And the network logo things, that was another print. A Latina in Detroit at a printing office in Detroit down in the neighborhood on Werner. Yeah, she's the one who came up with the idea for the network logos back in 2013 or something. Yeah. But uh, so I'm out there and, you know, I just. The things go back and forth. I'm doing well, I'm doing bad, doing well, doing bad. And it's 93. I've been living a couple blocks from the Dearborn City Hall for since October of 92, I think it was, I got in there. The room and an upper flat, there's other people in there. It's a drag, but, you know, it's the best I can do. And so I, I'm doing volunteer work at the City Hall, the fourth floor of the Arts Council. I'm doing volunteer work there. And, you know, I'm going back and forth to back to the, the, the house and I would pass by this building on the corner of Michigan and Schaefer because the city hall is on Michigan, right on the corner of Michigan and Schaefer. This building was kitty quarter to it. Looked like something that would have been an old Hudson's back in the day, you know. So I keep going by this building and I'm getting funny twinges, you know, because you know, I'm looking the whole the big, you know, it's got a big first floor, you know, 30 square, 30 foot ceiling, you know, and it's got all white on the windows, you know, so I figured, well, it's might be bad. So I go, go in this, you know, to the, down at a different floor in the city hall, and there's this young black girl working in deeds and whatever it is, and I said, who owns the Schaefer building across the street? She said, I'll find out, and so she comes back, she says, Ford Motor Land Development owns it, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, I got all, all this, all this stuff I've been sending for these years, they're going to be damn familiar with me, right? 
So I go, I go, I walk down from there. I drove, I walked for 27 years. I bought that Taurus wagon to get out of Spokane. I had walked for 27 years. But I go and I got my business cards and and so I could call Ford Motor Land of them. I said, hey, you got a building over here. Yeah, it, it apparently is vacant. It's a safer building on Michigan and Safer. So I said, we could, you know, I got a client who's interested in it. Now, this is all coming off the top of my head. The client was me, the other part of me. And so I get, I get can I see the inside? He said, well, sure. Well, you know, we, we arranged a time for someone to meet me there. And I met by this. James Woods, I think his name was, leasing specialist. So I had sat there and spoke to him. The heirs are they're getting, they're giving me hundred weed, hundred dollars an ounce. So this is ninety three, right? And, but it's not really good. So I got to smoke a couple of pens. And so this guy shows up, James Woods, I think. I'm almost sure his name was. And so uh, he takes me in there, and I'm telling you, man, it's just like I had a vision. I seen it all. And they come right off the top of my head. I described how we could turn this into a Ford Motorsport retail outlet combined with an all-ages dance club. We could have kiosks with different items, you know, that are available for them at the Ford dealer. And parts, that's where all the stuff is, you see. So they have to go there to get it. They could, we might take their money here, but let them go there to get it. And then that gets him involved with the Ford dealer, right? This stuff is coming right off the top of my head. And I forgot to mention, I had a one of them Panasonic ham recorders, you know, set the state of the art in 93, right? Or 91 when I got it. But I go there and I, I had shown them it when I come in and I had it going. And I was all of a sudden, I'm not, without any, I have no thought about the recorder. This stuff is just flowing out my mind. I'm just talking describing the difference i said we'd have big screens around you know showing for promotional films and stuff like that and the, you know the drink no cover you know we wanted to we wanted to spend money on on, on on cars car stuff you know you got to remember this is 93 the mustang gt was a big thing the 50 was a big thing you see because it was cheap and a lot of people were buying you know, so, you know, there's all kinds of stuff we can do. And I'm I'm giving it all to them. And at the end of it, I take and I pop the mini cassette out of the recorder and I hand it to him. I said, here, play this for your bosses and give me a call. This business card, I said, the, 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 the phone number is, I don't have a phone anymore. And I'm not living at that address. But I'll contact you. Okay. So I give them this mini cassette without thinking about all the other. It's a, like a 120 thing, 90 minutes or whatever it is. You know, it's, it's got all kinds of stuff. Ideas just pop into my head, right? So I hand them this mini cassette, and I go wandering off, and I'm telling you, that this is when I started to figure out God. Because I left there. Where did that idea come from? You know what I mean? Oh, you can see traces of things I've done over the years in the idea. You know, because I used to rent halls and get a band in and let everybody in for a couple bucks and, you know, drink pot and stuff. I used to do that. And it wasn't my idea either. It was my girlfriend's idea. She did it first, in fact. But, uh, So it just come right out time. Well, you know, I walk, but I walked away from there in a daze. You know, I, you know, I'm thinking, where did that idea come from? Ask yourself, where do ideas come from? Where do impulses come from? Huh? And I, I've always, I've always been a person to notice things, even when I was a little kid. You know, I was always checking things, trying to figure shit out. That was it. And from then on, I've just kept working on that idea and, and all that stuff. But, well, apparently, the only thing I can figure out is that they had my card. And so 
you know, they, they listen to my recording. They're real interested in this thing, man. What's, what's, hey, this is some good stuff. And, you know, they don't have, their, their, their only thing they could do was turn it over to Ford Security. Find this guy. Right? Well, Ford Security, no problem. They're, I mean, Ford Security, I mean, they're, they, they've been rated on the level of, FBI action. I mean, they're they're really good, right? They hire pros because of the Ford family involved. So they they go they go they tap my name into the computer and I'm red flagged because of the letters that Elsa Ford the second that they complained about. See, well, you know, if you know anything about Dearborn, Dearborn. Police and Ford Security, they're like hip to hip. So somebody from Ford Security, not knowing anything else, calls Dearborn Chief of Police. Okay, this is a theory, and I bet you it's true. I bet you I'm right. Okay, he calls the Dearborn Police. And he says, listen, you got this guy Herbert over there, such and such. They know Herberts. Yeah, because my brother shot a, a, a deputy chief in a B&E years ago. You know, I hate my brother. They don't want, I don't want to want to connect me with him, but that's what they're doing. Okay? So they call, they, they say, this guy Herbert, he's not, you know, he's on parole. You know, he's, he, he's trying to get in with Ford Motor Land Development, and I think Ethel Ford might have been CEO of it or something like that at that point. Man, a couple of days later, the Dearborn police over totally fabricated a wild, some, some me threatening little kids, and it was ridiculous the things we were saying, and got me committed to a mental hospital. You see? So the, I get in the mental hospital and I read what they said. Oh no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And they're forcing me to take medication. That's automatic when you get committed like that. You're gonna for, you're gonna put a needle in you. And I made them put a needle in me, you know. And I. <laughs> so. I am, you know, I'm, I'm all, I'm all talking about, we're going to, yeah, you, you can't force, you know, I'm going to sue you for forcing me to take medication, you know, and they, they, they so wanted to, you know, they so wanted to talk to me because, you know, I, and, and, and some of them I talked to, you know, I let out the brilliance, you see, and so they, but I'm, man, I'm driving them nuts. So they called the Department of Corrections to come get this guy. So they went ahead and they violated me for what I did while qualified doctors were going to testify at my competency hearing. I was mentally ill. Yeah. Think about it. Okay. So I go ahead and, you know, I, they, they, they violated my, I'm back in prison for what, for what they say I done while qualified doctors were going to testify. I was mentally ill. Their whole, they, they, the mental hospital turned me over to them. I ended up 16 and a half years before they paroled me again. 16 and a half years. I couldn't afford a cigarette. Okay? So I finally... They parole me in the 11 for about 45 days before they lied and put me back in prison. Parole me again in 13, 12, was it? I don't know. I had two 45-something, 40-something day paroles. Lied to put me in. Oh, yeah. they. But the thing is, Ford Motor Company caused all this, literally. Yeah, until Ford the second staff, Caused the, the, the whole thing to fall apart. Simple as that. Simple as that.
because you go, the, the idea was great. Ford, well, I could have capitalized the hell out of it, you know, for Ford Motor Company. You know, and because of what Ethel Ford II staff did, it, ki it killed it all and caused me to be put back in prison illegally again, continuing the same illegal detention for 16 and a half years. All right? Yeah, well... I've been out since 13. The last pro, and when they paroled me in 13, they were starting to get wind of what I was doing, what I was building in my mind. You know what? They, they paroled me to a furnished apartment a couple blocks down the street from the hospital I was born in in Detroit. Yeah. So, uh, and back in the old neighborhood, I was back in the old neighborhood again. Yeah. So, uh, they knew what they were doing. On my 30 years in prison, I never even got a fight with an inmate. Everybody left pretty much like it. I went into prison. The, the errors are calling people saying, hey, we, we like this guy. Yeah, they had inducted me into the Muslim mosque there in Dearborn. Yeah. Yeah. Every <laughs> square allegiance and everything. Yeah, I've always been, I've always been respectful of them. They, I, they've got some good ideas. But, uh, matter of fact, I used to say I was a modern Muhammad, and you know, coming with a higher guy, a real guy. That's all you got. All, that's all. That's all the Holy Bible is—a big fake God to control you people to get your money. All right. That's why, you know, God cosigns you every U.S. dollar. Their God cosigns. But they got to greed. Capitalize. Capitalism is greed. Simple as that. Well, I don't know. But that's it. Yeah. But hopefully some lawyer will sit through enough of this. Want to talk more about this. Yeah, because that's what this was, a video deposition of why Ford Motor Company owes me millions of dollars.